Joining me now is Democratic Congressman representing California's 17th Congressional District, which is located in the heart of Silicon Valley, Ro Khanna. Ro, thanks very much, or Congressman, thanks very much for being with us. Okay, artificial intelligence. People are nervous. Are you nervous about it? Katie, I'm not if we have the proper regulations. I mean, look, uh, it can actually create more jobs if you use the AI to have better robotics for manufacturing. It may increase productivity, allow us to bring manufacturing back. Consider a home care worker, and now they have AI. Maybe they'll be able to give medicine at the right time for someone they're caring for. So it depends how it's used. If it's used for excessive automation, yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. But it needs to be used Thoughtfully. We don't have a great track record when it comes to developing new technologies and then training up people in the old technologies to then do those jobs. I mean, just look at some of the cities that have been decimated after manufacturing has moved away because of automation. I'm looking at Flint, Michigan in particular. How do you regulate? How do you protect against artificial intelligence? decimating our, our labor force in a completely new way. It's not just one industry now. It's all industries that are potentially susceptible. Well, Katie, we've talked about manufacturing before. If you look from 1970 to 2000, manufacturing productivity increased, meaning automation, but the production increased too. So we didn't have job loss. Then what happened? We had the China get into the World Trade Organization, these bad trade deals. That's what cost us the manufacturing. I believe the right technology actually can bring those jobs back without massive retraining. I mean, people have to be digitally proficient. But let's talk about this chat. chat G Being digitally prof proficient is not as easy as it sounds, especially when you get older. It, the technology starts getting very complicated and harder to understand. Absolutely. I know this myself. Technology is getting harder for me, and I'm only 39. Absolutely. But I think you talked to the electricians at IBW or our carpenters. I mean, they're extraordinary, and the training centers are extraordinary. Now, they don't have to be programmers. They need to know how to operate uh, the machinery on the factory floor, which is different, and uh, it's also cleaner, and it's environmentally uh, better, and it's more gender diverse and racially diverse. So I think the future of manufacturing can be bright. But the, the point on ChatGPT, and I ask people to, to try it, you would never have your kid learn from ChatGPT. They're not going to replace teachers. They're not going to replace thinkers. They're going to do certain tasks, but they're a long way uh, still from being more than cliff notes. Is this administration Administration addressing it the way that that it should, preparing the American public for it. No, and Congress isn't either. I mean, in candor, I mean, we have to be ahead of the curve. We shouldn't allow what happened with the internet, where we were caught uh, blind, uh, blindsided, and uh, didn't have the regulations. We need to have regulations on ethics, on safety, and most importantly, to make sure that workers have a say. Workers need to have a say in how these technologies will be used. So President Biden's going to come out tonight, and he's going to talk about his ability to work with the other side, and that that's what the American public expects: Congress to get things done. It's not. No, it's not really translating to the American public yet. If you look at the poll numbers, the White House will say that's a bit of a hangover of anxiety from the pandemic and not to worry too much about it. What do you think the public needs to hear? And, and you've had these conversations. You've gone to these very red districts that have felt abandoned by Democrats. What do they need to hear from President Biden to, to make them feel like they are being seen and cared for? They need to hear that for 50 years, this country didn't care about them. We shipped their jobs offshore. The working and middle class have suffered. And we understand that people are still hurting. Someone said to me, Americans can't afford America. Child care costs too much. Health care costs too much. Prices are too high. We can't have a State of the Union that just brags about our accomplishments. We need to say we've shifted the Titanic. We're starting to bring jobs back. We're starting to address these needs. But it's going to take another decade. And we're going to be candid with you about what the stakes are. But triumphant policy uh, will not resonate because people are hurting out there. What do you, th you think that you can get done with your Republican colleagues this legislative session? Well, I'm very uh, pleased with Marco Rubio on my bill to try to bring steel manufacturing back, aluminum manufacturing back, investing in that. Uh, I'm working with Mike Gallagher on uh, armed services to make sure we're leading in AI, uh, cybersecurity, quantum uh, and leading technologies. Those are two areas. Uh, but, you know, what people want to see is compromise and getting things done. And that's the approach I'm going to take. Congressman Rokana, thanks very much. Always good to see you in person. This Thank time you, Katie. In, in D.C. Appreciate it.